Hello everyone, Nablab here. Today we're going to be making this very simple uh, joystick with button in the Godot game engine, uh, version 3.2.3 stable. And you can see that every time I click the button, the sprite will perform an action. In this case, it will twist around, randomly putting itself into a... It will randomly assign itself a rotation, and that's about it from the button. But we can also move this around, and because I do not have two mice on my computer, I cannot uh, show you them happening at the same time, but I assure you this works on mobile and I'll have a clip maybe right now. As you can see, I can move this joystick around and I can click this uh, button over here, which has the Godot sprite as um, unpressed and pressed as a little icon I made. And you can see that it works perfectly fine. That's it. So we already have a joystick and we already know that the joystick is going to accept input from everywhere across the device, but we want to make sure it doesn't accept input when we pass a certain threshold on the x-axis of our screen size. I hope that makes sense. We basically don't want to, we basically want to say that, oh yeah, move the joystick as long as you're, as long as you're over here in this area, but as soon as you go over here, stop registering any clicks. And of course you can modify it so it registers clicks if it's in between this area and in between this uh, purple line over here. But for the sake of this tutorial, I just said that if you register, if the joystick gets any clicks that are in this area, don't register them. But if they're in this area, register them. And you can see that clearly over here. You can see that while I'm moving around, it may, it, everything's working perfectly fine. But as soon as I like, I, wait, let me just move this guy over here. And you can see that every time, I'm just trying to find the point. You can see that as soon as I start clicking near the button, I can start clicking the button, of course. But there's like this small gap in between the button and the joystick where... I actually can't do anything and that's because I'm just trying to show that we can actually disable the joystick input across a certain area using a couple if statements. The button itself is just going to be a touchscreen button. I made it its own scene and you can see that the normal is just a Godot sprite and when we press it, it turns into this uh, scary looking joystick, I guess. You could say it's just the icon me.png. Um, just placeholder art. I'm just trying to prove a concept. I'm not trying to make anything fancy. That's why I don't use fancy sprites. I also want people to follow along. You can just use a regular old, like, I guess you could have used, you can use anything, honestly, but I'm just here to prove a concept. And that's about it. So enough said, let's hop right into making this. So we're going to start off with our game scene. We're going to make sure we get a couple things out of the way. We want to make sure that, um, let me just get rid of this. This is from the old, uh, old times when I was not that good at Godot. So you can see that every, every frame, we want to make sure that we set the player velocity equal to a value between the front and the back. And the values of the front and back are just going to be front.global position minus back.global position. What does this really mean? In our player script, you can see that we have the a velocity variable defined. And this velocity variable is actually what allows the player to move because we're moving and sliding by the velocity because the player is a kinematic body 2D. So, so, if we, so we have to set the player velocity equal to something because right now it's just equal to vector 2.0. So in the game scene or the parent scene, we're just going to be saying that, yeah, every frame, just make sure you get the values between the front and back of the of the front and back sprites of the joystick, and we're just going to set them equal to a vector. This is essentially what it looks like. So I already drew this for a previous tutorial I just recorded, but I'll, I'll happily explain it again. So essentially what we're going to be saying is if the front, if the front, which is a, a circle, right? The front is a circle. Let me just hop into that. Let me just hop into that scene. You can see that the front is a circle by itself. And the back is a, a square by itself. So essentially what we're going to be saying is wherever the front is, get that global position. Wherever the back is, get that global position and just subtract them. How do we subtract vectors? Well, we flip the second vector into the opposite direction. So we're actually going to be making it point up here. So this is for the blue vector. We're actually making it point up to the left. And we're just going to add them head to tail. So we take this vector. It becomes this one right here. And we take the other vector, which is this one. But remember, we're getting it from the opposite direction. So when we get it to the opposite direction and we add them tip to tail, so we're adding the, uh, we're putting the head of the red tail to the, or I could, I guess you could say we're putting the tail of the second vector to the head of the first one, and we get something like this. And if I just draw the resultant in yellow, you can see that I'm just tracing the path of the vectors, and we go over here to the top, and that's about it. We get the direction that we're meant to be going in. Uh, I hope that's simple. If you, that's not, I explained it in way more detail in my first joystick tutorial. I highly recommend. I'll put a link in the description with the timestamp to go there to check it out. Anyway, enough being said. Let's get straight into making the joystick itself. 
So of course you need, as I explained, a, a Node 2D which houses your front and back sprite. Um, it's a good idea to make your back sprite lower, uh, uh, higher up in the scene tree rather than lower because Godot renders everything from top to bottom. So if this is the first thing you made and then this is put on top, of course the front will show up on top and that's kind of what you want if you're making a joystick. I don't know why you'd want it otherwise. But anyway, let's get straight into making this. So as soon as you attach a sprite, which is just by going over here to this green script icon and clicking create, as soon as you attach them, we got to get some declarations of variables going on. So we're going to get a declaration to our front and back sprites. And I just realized we didn't need that variable. It was the minimum height. We don't need it for this tutorial. Uh, we want to, of course, define an ease value. You'll see where the ease value is used later. We want to define a range of the joystick because we're making a square. And we're just going to be getting a screen size. And we're going to be setting these uh, left max size, right max size, top max size, bottom max size. equal. To, we're just going to set their types equal to float. We're going to set their um, values later. But right now we're just setting it to uh, nothing. Right now they have the value of 0 if you think about it. So in the ready function, basic what we're, basically what we're going to be saying is we're going to be getting this, we're going to be setting the screen size equal to something, which is just get viewport rec dot size. And we're going to be setting the left max size equal to the back dot global position dot x minus the range of the joystick. Left max size equals the greatest uh, value we can go for our joystick. So let me just get a new black page. So basically what left max size, right max size, top max size and bottom max size mean. They basically mean that if we have our joystick back over here, let's say it's right here. We want to find a place where the joystick itself cannot go past. So the front, we want to make sure the front stays in a certain range because it's going to be super weird if the front is like, if let's say this is the front, uh, let me just make it pink for whatever reason. Let's say this is the front and we're moving it around and let's say a bad guy comes up and we move it over here. That would look super weird if the joystick is being shown in like the, uh, the frame of combat. Like oops, let's say the joystick's like this and we're moving, able to move it around all over the place. That's disgusting. We want to make sure it's clamped in a certain box. So that's essentially what we're saying. We're going to be saying that back dot global position dot x minus the range of the joystick. Range of the joystick is 200. So basically what's what we're saying is from over here. Actually, let me get rid of that. Let me just zoom in from basically saying from here to wherever minus 200 is. This is the maximum the joystick can go away on the left. We're doing the exact same on the right. This is the maximum the joystick can go over here. I should have done this with a line tool. Uh, 200 up, 200 down. And we're actually making a box around our joystick. To define, is brown a good color? Yeah, brown's a nice good color. We're basically making a box to define where the joystick can and cannot leave. So in our new joystick, which is going to be green, because green is good, it's basically going to be able to, it's going to be clamped and we can't move it anywhere past here. And let's say this is, um, let's say this is like the line for your game. We don't want the joystick to be able to go up here. And that's essentially the problem we're going to be solving. So let's hop over here and you can see that Back, the left max side is obviously going to be equal to wherever the back is. Subtract the range, of obviously in the X component. The right max size is going to be the plus version. So it's going to be on the right hand side. And then top max size, bottom max size work out from first principles. Same thing. So top is actually going to be negative because the top of the frame or going upwards is negative And going downwards is positive. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, leave me an angry comment saying I explained it horribly. But let's move on. So now we're going to be moving on to movement of the front sprite. So I really like to put all my code into uh, certain uh, functions. And right now I'm going to be naming it the front related function. So everything uh, related to the front sprite is going to happen here. So we're basically going to say in the front related, get the mouse position. We always want to get the mouse position because this is a joystick. And speaking of the mouse position, just make sure in your project settings. Sorry, uh, just make, uh, make sure when you go to your project settings, go to pointing, input devices pointing, and make sure emulate touch from mouse is on because if you're making a mobile game, you want to make sure that the player can actually touch the device. Otherwise, it's kind of useless. So this is essentially what we're going to be saying. When we click with our left mouse button, and I guess you can replace this with a get action, I don't know, is action uh, press. And you can just replace this with click because it's a lot easier for you to manage what's happening. So click is not defined right now. So we have to go to our project setting, input map, and click. And go to our mouse button. Sorry, mouse button. All devices left button so now we can click we're basically saying that the front global position is going to be equal to a lerped version or linear interpolated version of the mouse position to oh, sorry we're going to say it's equal to a linear interpolated version of the front position to the mouse position what this basically means is if i go over here we're basically saying that if the mouse is over here where there is a let's say blue blue dot but no actually i can't 
let's say the mouse is over here in this blue dot we want to make sure that this uh our green uh, joystick will go move to it smoothly like this we don't want it to teleport over here like it's like over here then the next frame it's over here that looks disgusting we want to make sure it smoothly moves and i can even show you the difference between them so actually let me just copy paste this line so i can save it later and let's say we just let's just say we set the front goal position equal to the mouse position we get something like this it just teleports over there and it's really jagged and leggy looking and then it's able to smoothly transition back that's the difference we're working with. We're working with either smooth transition versus random teleportation. And you see when I paste this line back in and I rerun the frame, we get everything looks a lot smoother. So, so right now we're getting our positions, but as you can see when we run the scene, we're able to move everywhere. And I said that was really disgusting. What we're basically going to be doing is clamping our values. By clamping our values, I literally mean that we're just going to say clamp. And of course, this is a function. Clamp the front dot global position dot x. To the left max size and the right max size we can't clamp a vector or we can clamp a vector but it's not going to be doing what we want which is making a box if you read these two lines of code you get this box around us which is exactly what i promised in the paint uh, explanation we're going to get this box around the joystick which the front joystick will not be able to escape from now we want to make sure that uh, we can click the button without getting interrupted by this uh oops, by this uh joystick because imagine if you're like moving and you want to attack and then you start moving to the right that's not good so according to first principles, we want to make sure that we do not get any input events past a certain area. We can basically say something along the lines of if our mouse position is greater than, uh, let's say, uh, let's say our mouse position dot X is greater than 720, then just return. And that's essentially saying that if our mouse position goes past 720, do nothing. But if it's less than 720, which is somewhere around here, remember at the beginning of the video, I explained this black line. It's like around 720 ish. I really can't be bothered with getting the precise value because this is just a proof of concept, but we're one pixel away. I do not know why my mouse moves two pixels, but whatever. Uh, 720, and you can see that in this uh, demo, it does nothing. And in fact, it gets stuck there. So if we don't want it to get stuck, we just copy paste this line, paste it there. And now, and whenever we move, you can see that Godot will continue responding. Why is that the case? Oh, and the reason Godot continues responding is because we have to put an else if statement here. So now you can see that Godot doesn't respond. And as soon as I move my mouse over there, it stops. So let's say you're like a gladiator fighting and then you have a sword out. You can just click your sword now. And if you're wondering how the button is able to act on the joy on the player, we have to go over here to our touch a screen button. Um, actually, let me just get out of distraction free mode. Hop over here. You can see the button. I said I just placed some sprites there to visually... Uh, to make a visual distinction between pressed and normal. I'm just using the signal. I just went over here, like I went to press and I click connect. It made this uh, function over here. And I said player.twist. What's player.twist? Well, I first have to get reference to the player. So I said, uh, make a variable called player. If you want to, you can set the type equal to a kinematic by 2D. We're gonna say player equals get parent dot get node player. The reason we have to do get parent is because if we go over here to our game scene and we see our touchscreen button script, we can see that we have to get our parent, which is game scene, and we have to get the node player. Make sure with a capital P, if player was a, uh, let me just rename it. Where's the name? Rename, rename. Oh my God, I can't see your name. Oh, there we go, rename. If our, if a player was player like this, then make sure your lower, it has a lowercase p. That's important to remember. And we're just saying player.twist. What's player.twist? Well, I'm, well, if we go over here to our player, which is right over here in our script, we make a function called twist. This could also be called hit, add shoot whatever and we just uh, we just uh uh explain the function that happens whenever we twist or shoot and that's up to you and your game if you want to shoot i have a tutorial about that if you want to fire a laser i have a tutorial about that and now we have a uh error why do we have an error uh if you if you're wondering why we have an error it's because i changed the name and over here the name was player with a capital p i changed it to a lower case p and you can see that now everything's working I think that's all I have to say in this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below uh, saying, oh my God, you explained this horribly. Oh, but if I explained it well, please tell me if I explained it well. That really helps out. And um, yeah, I'm going to show you a phone tutorial right now. Have an amazing day. And of course, the code's in the description down below. Have an amazing day. That's all I have to say. As you can see, I can move this joystick around and I can click this uh, button over here, which has the Godot sprite as um, unpressed and pressed as a little icon I made. And you can see that 
It works perfectly fine. That's it.